Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you are back, welcome back. Today, I am hopping on to share with you a part two of my multi-placing for perfectionists video. I shared a tips and tricks videos, a video a couple of weeks ago, and it was specifically dealing with round drills and multi-placing. And I had asked in that video if you would like me to do a separate video for squares, I'd be happy to, and it was very much requested. So I am happy to oblige. So if you watch that video, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about tonight will be redundant, but there are a couple of things that we do differently when we multi-place with squares over round drills. So first things first, I find it's always good to start with a good foundation. And that's a couple of key things for me. One of the number one things is a large drill tray that is a quality where the drills are not going to get stuck or caught in the lines. So with 3D printed trays, um, it's just making sure you get one that's pretty cleanly cut. This one is from MuniMade um, and it is very large. <laughs> it's perfect for multi-placing them. Um, second thing that you want to make sure that you have, I will strongly, strongly recommend the skinny plastic multi-placers. Now let me show you these side by side with the thicker multi-placers that often come with kits or that you often see. So you can see how this one is skinnier and I find these to be significantly easier to multi-place with than the thicker ones. So you can get a multi, um, variety pack of these from Star Ore on Amazon or on the Star Ore website. They're really inexpensive and they are by far my favorite. Um, and yes, I have multiple sizes here. The third thing that I will strongly recommend is a wax that you find easy to work with. My go-to for multi-placing is absolutely Museum Putty, Quake Cold Museum Putty. It lasts a really long time. It's really forgiving. Um, and it just works really well for multi-placing. I don't have the outer packaging for this anymore, but I'm going to link all of the products here and that I mentioned down in the description below so you can go and take a look if you're interested in trying it for yourself. Um, the other thing that's particularly important when it comes to multi-placing with square drills is that if at all possible, that you're working on a high quality kit, that you're not gonna be have to be picking around a lot of trash or drills with tabs on them or um, inconsistently sized drills because that makes such a big difference when it comes to multi-placing squares. So um, in as much as it's in your control, try to make sure that you are working on a, a kit with good quality square drills. So let's start with talking about how we go about picking up drills for multi-placing. So uh, for, just for sake of demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using a seven placer. Um, multi-placers come in a variety of sizes. If you are brand new to multi-placing, I suggest starting with a three or a four placer like this, just to kind of get your feet wet. I think it's a good starting point but it'll be easier for me to demonstrate sort of the techniques and things that I'm talking about tonight with a slightly larger placer, so the seven placer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some drills and pour them into the tray here. And when you've got a tray like this, where you can shape to line them up, and it takes very little effort to get them to line up neatly. <laughs> so what's important with square drills? There's a couple of things. So as much as you can, you wanna tap on it to get them to line up nice and neatly next to each other. Now, after you've done this, take a look at the drills in your tray and note any spots that the drills are not sitting flush up against one another. So for example, right here, there's a piece of trash that we'll wanna pick out before we try to multi-place so that that's out of our way. Of course, it's one of those slippery kinds. That's fine, we'll take care of it later. Um, you'll also wanna take note, like down here, there's again, looks like just a little piece of something that got in there. But any spots that you notice the drill's not sitting, like actually this is an example too, I don't know if it will show up very well. 
distril right here, you see how these this doesn't want to line up perfectly neatly next to it? This drill that I'm touching has a little extra resin off to the side. So I don't want to multi-place with that drill. I'm going to take it out. So you can either remove those drills or just intentionally not pick them up with the multi-placer. <laughs> Again, this is super important because you really need drills that are going to be sitting flush and neatly against each other or you're going to run into spacing issues on your canvas. As far as what it looks like to actually pick these up, let me zoom you in to give you a little bit better look here. So here's my technique. If you have watched my multi-placing video for round drills, you heard me mention quite often in there that I feel like I multi-place just slightly differently than most diamond painters do, where I think most diamond painters will pick up drills with the multi-placer with kind of their pen straight up and down at a 90 degree angle. I tend to hold my pen at a little bit of an angle when I pick up my drills because that gives me better visibility both when I'm picking them up and when I'm placing them on the canvas. It is a little bit trickier to do it at as much of an angle when it comes to square drills, but especially if you're using the Quakehold Museum putty in your multi-placer, it's very forgiving and actually works really well for picking up at an angle. So here's what I do. Um, I take a look at my canvas and I'll show you the canvas in a moment. Um, let's say that I need to pick up seven drills with my seven placer. So I'm going to count over from the right hand side seven drills and I'm going to plant the left side of my multi-placer. I'm going to plant it on that farthest drill and then I'm going to stretch and rock over to the right. And you can see I've picked up seven drills just like that um yes they, you might notice there's not they're not exactly flush up against each other that's okay it's gonna be fine when we go to put it on the canvas um and if you also if you take a look you can tell that they are on there at just a little bit of an angle there you go you can see and like i said that's going to help me with when i go to actually place these on the canvas so let me go ahead and pull out the kit that uh, these drills go with and I'll show you what it looks like to actually place them on the canvas. All right, so here we have my current whip, which is Snow Deer from Diamond Art Club. And as you can see, if you take a look at the symbols here, this is a multi-placer's dream. It's also a great chance to practice my multi-placing. So let's talk about what it looks like to actually put drills on the canvas but first i do want to mention that there are a couple of ways you can actually put drills down some people prefer to multi-place horizontally and others prefer to place vertically i fall in the former camp where i for whatever reason it just works better for my brain to multi-place um horizontally uh, but honestly in a canvas like this I tend to just place in the direction that the lines seem to go so in this case with the direction the canvas is there's more horizontal lines of symbols for multi-placing um, and so I'll have to do less work and I'm all about finding the most efficient way to go about multi-placing so now I've zoomed you in so that you can see just a little bit better for placing. And this is really just gonna be the same motion that we did for picking the drills up. There's one thing in particular I want you to keep in mind though. So we're gonna start over on the leftmost symbol that this is going to go down on. I'm gonna look at the drill that's over on the left-hand side and I'm going to like just on the left-hand side, holding my multi-placer at a bit of an angle this way. I'm gonna plant that one drill centered perfectly on the symbol, okay? Now I want you to imagine this being planted and then now look all the way over to the right and st imagine stretching over and placing the rightmost drill centered perfectly on the rightmost symbol. And that is going to help you end up with a really hopefully evenly spaced multi-place set of drills <laughs> um, and also in a straight line as well. Something to keep in mind just in my experience with multi-placing, I find that almost invariably I have to go back and use my single placer or 
some kind of straightener or tweezers to go back and straighten up my squares just a little bit, especially depending on the spacing of the kit. Like I, I'm, again, <laughs> this is a multi-placing video for perfectionists. I'm a perfectionist, so I tend to go back and fiddle, especially when there's large color blocked areas where if your drills are not evenly spaced and consistent, uh, it's gonna be really obvious. So here, let me, shift you up so you can see so let's do this again we're going to place some more drills so you can see again so um okay right now we only have three symbols left of this color that we need to place and in case you didn't know you actually don't have to pick up the exact number of drills that your multi-placer calls for every time so even though this is a seven placer it is super simple and not a big deal to pick up three drills with it so um, like I did before. I'm gonna count over from the open side, three, plant the left side, rock to the right a bit. There we go, a little bit of an angle so that I can see well. And then I'm gonna plant on the left, look to the right, imagine stretching over, center in the symbol, and it's down. Let's do this long line again. I'm gonna need seven, so I'm gonna count over from the right-hand side, plant the left, rock to the right. Again, that's much more evenly spaced than that very first set I showed you. Again, most helpful thing that I can do is I plant that first drill, I center it right on that first symbol, and I, while I'm holding that down, planted firmly, then I look over to the right, look at the rightmost drill on the rightmost symbol, imagine centering it perfectly there, stretch a little bit if I need to, and look, it's perfect. <laughs> Any other perfectionist feeling very satisfied seeing that right now. Look, you can even just pick up only two drills if you want to. So this is the kind of thing that is absolutely going to get easier with time and practice and you kind of just have to especially if you're a perfectionist embrace that it is just not going to be perfect right out the gate but it is extremely worth it to put the time in to get the hang of it get past that learning curve i promise it will get easier and it's very satisfying however if it continues to be just difficult and frustrating for you, there is no right or wrong way to diamond paint. You do not have to multi-place. You can single place every drill on every canvas that you own. Whatever is least stressful and most relaxing for you is the right way to diamond paint. Now, let's go ahead and talk about um, a couple of hiccups that you can sometimes run into with multi-placing and multi-placing squares specifically. So squares can be a little finicky in terms of if I just continue to line these all up right next to each other, if I'm not paying close attention, and even if I am paying close attention, um, sometimes I can end up with my drills sort of going at a slant. Like if I'm not really intentional about keeping them in a really straight line, parallel you know, to the rest of the drills on the canvas and lines on the canvas, I might find that I have a little bit of a slant going. So one way that you can combat this is by checkerboarding. You may or may not have heard of checkerboarding as a technique to do with single placing. And what checkerboarding is when you're single placing is where you're just placing a drill every other space and then you go back in and fill in the gaps. And the reason that you do this is the same reason that you can checkerboard while multi-placing, which is that um, it helps avoid having your drills going at an angle. This kind of helps them just straighten themselves. So how you multi-place and checkerboard is just the same concept. So let's say we want to checkerboard from here. I have a line of drills here. So then I'm going to skip this row and fill in the next row multi-placed. So again, I'm going to plant on the left. I'm going to look to the right and rock down. 
and I've got an open line there. So then we'll skip this one and go to the next one. The next one, I only need six drills, not seven for my seven placer. Plant to the left, rock to the right. And then I have these gaps here with the one that I missed on the end. Now, when I go to fill that back in, if we're lucky, we're gonna get that really satisfying crunch sound you get from squares. Let's see. Okay, a little bit of a crunch. <laughs> Let's fill in the other one, plant to the left, rock to the right. And there, that's really just helped my drill stay a little bit more neatly lined up. It kind of helps me avoid with ending up at a little bit of a slant or some other weirdness. So yeah, it's totally possible to checkerboard with multi-placing squares. And uh, I don't tend to usually, but it's one of those things I thought you might find helpful to know. So a couple of other things to be aware of. If you are going along in multi-placing, and let's say you go to pick up your drills and you notice that like consistently, let's say consistently, one of your, it just won't pick up a drill in the middle um, or even on the ends. What that may mean is that you need to sort of reset your wax <laughs> because over time you do get these divots in your wax from picking up the drills. Um, and so every once in a while, if I find there's a spot that keeps wanting to not pick up drills, I will just run my finger over my wax, kind of flatten it out. I say wax, it's museum putty, not technically wax, but you know what I mean. <laughs> flatten it out and I've kind of helped it reset. Um, if that doesn't help you, it is possible that um, your multi-placing tip has started to wear down. Let me show you on a different pen, different multi-placer. If you take a look at this one, it's a little hard to see. Let's flip it over. Okay, you can see a little bit of the grooves, but there you go. Particularly look at the right end. You see how there's a curve that's been worn into it. Same over on the left. You could see that curve that's born, been worn into the plastic and some little divots in the middle as well. This is just kind of what happens when you use a plastic multi-placer. They do make stainless steel multi-placers, but for the sake of a video that's intended for um, likely beginners or people that are potentially newer to diamond painting, I didn't want to recommend an expensive tip like the stainless steel tips so but know that those do exist and those will not wear down the same way that the plastic ones do um, if you're using these skinny placers like what i need to do with this one at this point because it's not wanting to pick up drills on either end very well um, or <laughs> it's wanting to almost curve my drills when i try to set them down on the canvas and ends up putting my drills at a really strange angle um, what you can do is take a nail file, very, very lightly sand this down. It will only take you a couple of passes with a nail file. You don't have to go to town on it. Um, but that will help flatten this out and reset it so that you can pick up drills easily again. You will get to a certain point where you've gotten so far down in the plastic that you cannot sand it down anymore and then you'll just have to replace your multi-placer but like i said these skinny plastic placers are very inexpensive and i find it to still be pretty cost effective um, the other thing to be aware of with square drills is when you are multi-placing with lighter colors let me show you Another way that squares are just fickle is if you're multi-placing with lighter colors like a white um, or like a beige or even these like light blues, um, it's real. it tends to be really obvious when someone has used a multi-placer with lighter drills because you just very easily see the lines in them. Like you can, I'm sure you can see how mine are not perfectly even, even though I've gone back through with my single placer and tried to you know, straighten and center them. So if um, you are still getting the hang of multi-placing squares, I would suggest practicing on darker drills first, like these down here. It's much less obvious if the darker drills, you know, I have some black up here, it's the same way, here's side by side, black and white. It's much more obvious if your spacing isn't 
perfect on the dark drills as compared to the white drills. So just something to keep in mind. I know a lot of people that they won't even try placing multi-placing on really light colors because they just, it drives them crazy that it doesn't look as perfect and consistent as they want it to. So I think that's about it as far as my tutorial for multi-placing with squares. Um, if you want to check out any of the specific products that I mentioned from the tray to the skinny placers to each of the pens that I've shown in this video and uh, even to this kit um, and to the Quake Old Museum Putty if I didn't mention that. I'm going to link all of those in the description below so please go check that out if you're interested in any of these particular products. Also, if you're curious about how to load Museum Putty into a multi-placer, I actually have a tutorial specifically for that that I'm going to link up in the eye up here in the upper right corner and also down in the description below. And so if you're not familiar with Museum Putty and want some uh, tips and tricks for getting it loaded and getting it working for you, I highly recommend checking out that video. If you have any specific questions about multi-placing squares or multi-placing in general that I might have missed or forgotten to touch on, please leave those down in the comments below. I do try to read every single comment and heart or respond to them so that you know I've seen it and I'm always happy to answer questions as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please consider giving it a thumbs up before you click away. And if you are not already subscribed, I'd love if you considered subscribing and hanging out on my little corner of the internet here with me. Um, and oh, you can even hit the bell to be notified whenever I share new videos, which is not on much of a schedule, but I do try to check in with you guys regularly and share things like unboxings, post reviews, tutorials, that sort of thing. And I am always open to feedback and things that you would like to see. So I'm going to let you guys go, but I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will talk to you again soon. Bye friends.